um, just a very quick uh, disclaimer here um, that uh, Sense Financial Services is not a fiduciary and we do not provide legal, tax, investment or accounting uh, advice and if you need such advice please talk to the expert in the field. But uh, the topic of my presentation today is to introduce to you self-directed retirement accounts. Uh, you can see my contact information here on the screen, so if you have any questions after the presentation, we will have uh, some time, uh, hopefully left over, that we will be able to take questions from the audience and answer those questions, but uh, if you do not get an answer to your question, uh, you're welcome to contact uh, my office uh, at the number that you can see, and uh, you can also email me. And I do offer a free consultation to all the attendees, so you can take advantage of that. Now, um, the Proverbs 21.5 says, good planning and hard work leads to prosperity. And uh, my background is in financial planning, and I use this uh, proverb often. It's very important that you have a good plan when you do something. When you decide to build a house, you're not going to do it just out of your head. Uh, and even if you do, you're going to have some plans in your head. But it's very important to have a plan, to have a roadmap. And uh, we believe that we are providing that guidance to you when it comes to planning for retirement. Uh, we provide you the tools and, and uh, as education that you can use to uh, help um, plan your retirement future. And basically, our motto here is we helping our clients obtain control and protect their retirement accounts. And before I jump into explaining the different options that are available to you, I wanted to show you uh, just an example of one of our clients. This is Jason. Uh, Jason is uh, from Tallahassee, Florida. He found us on the internet uh, searching for uh, providers to basically help him take control over his retirement accounts. Jason had a couple of different retirement accounts, an IRA and a 401k with the past employer, uh, total about $125,000. Uh, he actually came and bought a couple of years ago, but uh, his accounts were losing money in the stock market and uh, he was concerned about the state of uh, our country and the economy and uh, where it's headed. Uh, he was concerned about uh, government coming in and uh, taking private retirement accounts, just as it uh, happened in a number of countries. And uh, he was looking for a solution. He did not want uh, anybody to have access to his uh, funds. So he uh, contacted us and uh, after uh, providing a consultation to him, we were able to set up a self-directed solo 401k plan uh, for Jason, and he was able to make the following investments. He actually used money in his self-directed uh, 401k to purchase a rental property. So now his 401k owns this house that you can see, and uh, all of the income, all of the rental income that is collected is going right back into his retirement account. And uh, he also took uh, some of the money and he invested in uh, a real estate note. He actually became a bank. And uh, this is a very popular way to uh, invest. I think it's a uh, very low risk because your investment is secured by uh, underlying property. So um, it's, it's very low risk. You have guaranteed return on investment. And also the money that uh, left over he invested in, into his brother's manufacturing business. And together, uh, those investments producing about $1,000 a month in a cash flow that's going right back into his retirement account. Now, from uh, basically uh, getting no return in his retirement account, over the years, the market had fluctuated, his retirement account balance fluctuated, and before coming to us, he actually got sick of that and he liquidated all of his investments and he put everything into the money market account, earning uh, something like half a percent. And obviously, that's if you look into that, that's like losing money. 
if you uh, compare that with the inflation, which is about uh, between three to five percent, getting half a percent return on your money is losing money. So think about this. Now his retirement account is growing every single month. Uh, he's excited, and again, the reason I'm showing you this example is just to kind of uh, illustrate to you that uh, there is virtually unlimited potential uh, how much you can diversify your retirement account. And uh, uh, if you're looking at your account statements, and if you're uh, just as this cartoon uh, that says, I finally decided to put something aside uh, for our retirement, uh, which is our plans to retire, if you're looking at your statements and thinking something along those lines, there, there is hope for you. You can actually uh, take your retirement account, you can also take control over that, set up a self-directed IRA or a 401k, and you can invest in, into investments that you control, that you understand better, not, not relying on somebody else, not relying on the stock market, which you have no control over, but investing into something tangible. Uh, so let's talk about the options that are available for you. And again, this presentation, just to give you an overview, I'm not going to be drilling into details for each one of those options, but rather just give you an uh, overview of the options that are available for you. And then uh, if you wanted to discuss further and see uh, which option might be the best for you, what will be the best fit, uh, we'll be gladly uh, we'll gladly do that over the phone for you. So three options, a self-directed IRA, a checkbook IRA, and a solo 401k. So let's take a look at uh, each one of those. Uh, first, uh, just a quick comparison between uh, your conventional retirement account and a self-directed retirement account. So if you have a conventional IRA or a 401k or if you work for a uh, 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 some government uh, organization, you might have a 403B or 457, then uh, you have an account that is controlled by the custodian. And uh, custodian limits the investment choices for you. So your investment choices are uh, only stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You don't have any other choices. And, and even those are limited. And uh, here is a, a picture of uh, uh, illustration. When I had a, a job years ago and I had a 401k at my job, I had a representative from the company will come up and meet with us, all the participants of the 401k, and give us a sheet similar to this, which listed investment options for our 401k. And it was just a handful of mutual funds that were available. That's it. Now, when uh, you look into a self-directed retirement account, you actually control the investment choices. And uh, here on the right-hand side, you'll see just uh, some examples of uh, some of the most common investments that are available for you. You can invest in uh, real estate, uh, tax liens and tax deeds. Uh, you can do options. You can actually be the bank and you can invest in mortgage notes or trust deeds. Uh, you can invest in business just like Jason did. Uh, you can buy real estate outside of the country. I have clients buying, uh, uh, who, who buy in real estate in uh, India, in uh, Mexico, in Canada, and Japan. Uh, you can uh, invest in a private business. You can uh, do private lending. And you can also do the same conventional investments, stocks and mutual funds. And see, folks, the list on the right-hand side is not a full list of options that are available for you, but rather uh, this is just uh, some of the examples. Actually, a list like that does not even exist uh, because uh, rather than giving you a list of available investments, IRS actually uh, gives you a few things that you cannot do, and we will discuss those. But uh, there is only a few limitations that are not allowed inside of your retirement account, and anything that is not on that list is up to you. You can invest, so and that makes it virtually unlimited investment options. But uh, so, what is a self-directed IRA? A self-directed IRA is a tax-deferred trust account that is held with the IRS-approved custodian, 
And the main benefit of uh, this setup is that uh, self-directed IRA allows you to invest into non-traditional assets. See, IRS does not limit uh, your uh, retirement account investments just to mutual funds and stocks. IRS does not say that you cannot invest in real estate. No, it's rather the custodian that you, you're holding your IRA, whether it's a Charles Schwab or Merrill Lynch or Fidelity uh, or Wells Fargo, they're the ones that limit your investment choices. And the reason that they do that because uh, basically they're in business to uh, sell in some sort of investments, uh, mutual funds or, or uh, something like that. And that's why they limit uh, your investment ability. Uh, most of the people out there that don't even know that self-directed IRA or 401k exist, but they have been around since 1974 for quite a long time. And uh, they were designed to help people like you and I save for the retirement uh, under Internal Revenue Code Section 408. So how self-directed IRA works? I decided to put together this quick uh, illustration for you. So the step one is you will open a new account with uh, IRS approved self-directed custodian. And it's going to be similar to uh, account that you might have at Fidelity, but it's going to be a self-directed custodian, uh, um, which is a trust company uh, that is approved by the IRS, and they do not place restrictions on the investment options. Uh, second step is to transfer funds from your existing retirement account, uh, whether it's an IRA or 401k, uh, into the new account. Once the transfer is completed, then you, uh, as an account owner, you tell the custodian how you want to invest your money. Uh, you direct the custodian to make the investments. You can tell them, I want to buy a piece of property or I want to invest uh, in a, uh, do a private lending and uh, actually invest in a trust deed. And uh, uh, the custodian will make the investment on your behalf. So all of the income um, and exp all of the expenses will be paid from the custodian account. So if you need to pay, for example, a property tax bill or if you need to pay for the repair of the property, you don't have the ability to just, you know, make that expense yourself. You will have to instruct the custodian. Again, you will direct the custodian to make that expense and they will send the check. And every time you do that, uh, there is a fee that is associated with that. And that's one of the disadvantages, that you don't have direct control uh, and uh, you have to do everything through a custodian. They are kind of like a middleman, uh, if you will. And uh, uh, there are delays. You, you cannot execute uh, transactions immediately. So this uh, setup is good if you not planning to actively be engaged in the investments and, and do a lot of transactions if uh, you're just doing maybe one, uh, one investment that, that could be a viable uh, option for you. But uh, if you're um, planning on being more engaged, then there are some other options that are available for you. Now let's talk about the Checkbook IRA. Checkbook IRA, also known as a IRA LLC or IRA owned LLC. It's a, a special purpose LLC that is created with one purpose to be owned by your retirement account. It, it does require IRS compliance setup uh, and filing. So when the filing is submitted with the Secretary of State, there's special language that needs to be used. Uh, and also uh, IRS compliant operating agreement is required. Make sure that you're in compliance with the IRS. And it allows the, to bypass the custodian when making investments and uh, transactions. So to illustrate, I'm going to use another um, chart for you. Step number one is to open a new account with the IRS approved custodian. Uh, step number two, you will transfer the funds from your existing account into the new one. And then step number three, you will uh, set up a special purpose single member LLC. And you become a manager of that LLC. So you're the manager and your IRA is the owner or member of that LLC. Once the LLC is created, then uh, you will open up a, a bank account for the LLC. So and that's a final step is to fund that LLC. The IRA actually buys units of the LLC. 
And once the uh, bank account is uh, bank account is funded, at that point you, as a manager of the LLC, have 100% control over uh, all of the investments and all of the decisions, and uh, you transact transactions without the custodian involvement. The custodian is no longer involved. They become a passive custodian. They still hold in your IRA. Custodian is required for an IRA, but uh, there is no longer, you now have a checkbook control. So all of the uh, expenses paid by you by simply writing a check from your LLC checking account and all of the income going back into the LLC checking account. So uh, the benefits of that is uh, you bypass the custodian, you're not, no longer paying custodian fees, and uh, uh, you can execute transactions immediately uh, without delays that come with the custodian. So, and, and then uh, last option, let's talk about solo 401k. Solo 401k is uh, 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 defined under Internal Revenue Code Section 401, uh, and it is defined as Retirement Saving Trust. Uh, uh, this plan is designed for those people who are self-employed or own a small business. It's not a new type of retirement plan, but it's uh, just a 401k, your traditional 401k, but it's simplified uh, because it only includes uh, the business owner and uh, his or her spouse if they're also involved in the business. So there is no um, additional requirements and uh, maintenance that will be required with the bigger plans, so that's why it's uh, considered simplified. And uh, they became popular uh, since about 2002 when the law changed the tax treatment. And uh, it actually made many of the benefits available, and we'll look at those in just a moment. Uh, now, who's eligible for a solo 401k? There is a two criteria that you need to meet. Number one, you need to have a presence of some sort of self-employment activity. And that can be in any type, shape, or form. And uh, um, just some of the examples, uh, you can be, uh, uh, you, you can uh, actually uh, have that self-employment activity in addition to your full-time job. You may be a W-2 employee, but you may have uh, you might be able to do some side income and uh, you generate some 1099 income that you report on Schedule C, then you qualify. And uh, number two, your, the business cannot have any full-time employees other than you and your spouse. And full-time is defined by somebody who's working more than 1,000 hours a year, which is about 20 hours a week. So you can have part-time employees work for you, but not full-time. If you have full-time employees, then you need a full uh, um, 401k plan. Now, the benefits of the solo 401k is actually pretty exciting because uh, they uh, one of the benefits is a high contribution limit. They actually allow you to uh, contribute up to $59,000 per year. And if you compare that with uh, uh, traditional IRA, uh, limit on that is $6,500. So it's also a great tax sheltering vehicle for those people who are self-employed. It also allows you to borrow from your plan tax-free and penalty-free before you retire. Uh, if, you have, if you have an IRA, you cannot access your funds until you retire. And if you do, you're going to pay taxes and penalties. But with the solo 401k, you can actually borrow uh, up to $50,000. Uh, even before retirement. Uh, next, uh, solo 401k plan comes with the Roth account, so you can make contributions both on the pre-tax as well as post-tax basis. Uh, and the Roth contributions are up to $24,000. Compare that with $6,500 for a Roth IRA, and uh, there is no income requirements uh, for a Roth 401k contribution. Uh, in other words, if you make too much money, you can still make contributions to a Roth 401k, unlike Roth IRA. And uh, uh, checkbook control and the cost-effective administration, uh, there is no custodian involved. Uh, it is set up as a trust, and you become the trustee of that trust. So uh, as a trustee, you have total control, and your spouse can also participate in the same plan, and you can pull all the assets together for 
the same investment and uh, uh, that is very, very cost effective. And another benefit is that it is exempt from unrelated debt finance income tax if you're uh, using your 401k to uh, purchase a property with uh, uh, leverage. So if you finance a property using leverage in an IRA, there is a tax assessed on portion of the income and that is not the case with the solo 401k. So the bottom line, self-directed uh, IRA and a 401k allow you to be truly diversified. Uh, you don't have to keep all of your eggs in one basket and uh, if you're investing in, in uh, uh, some mutual funds, sometimes people tell me, hey, uh, I'm invested in a mutual fund so I am diversified. Well, guess what? Uh, if you're investing in mutual funds, your investment might be diversified between or within that mutual fund uh, into different companies, but it's still the same asset class. You're still invested in the stock market you don't have true diversification. In order to achieve a true diversification, you need a self-directed retirement account. This way then you can diversify in different asset classes. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11.2 says, divide your portion to seven or even to eight, for you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. See, you and I, we don't know the future. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and we don't know which investments will do well and which don't. And for that reason, if you uh, diversify your investment portfolio, that will increase your uh, performance or, or better performance for the future. So if you're self-directed your retirement account, uh, that means you can have unlimited investment choices. You can invest in uh, um, uh, metals, Silver and, silver and gold, you can invest in real estate, you can uh, do hard money lending out of your 401k, you can buy commercial real estate, you can invest in private business, and you can be the bank uh, and invest in trust deeds. Now let's talk uh, about things that you cannot do. Um, basically the Internal Revenue Code section 4975 talks about prohibited transaction rules and at least three investment uh, classes that cannot be invested uh, within your IRA. And that is collectibles and uh, can be coins, stamps, anything that is considered collectible, uh, life insurance contracts and uh, um, S corporation. And then on top of that, uh, the rules say that uh, there is certain people that your retirement account cannot conduct any type of dealing with. And those uh, people are called disqualified person. That is yourself, your spouse, uh, your uh, ancestors, your lineage descendants, such as your son or a daughter or grandchild, and their spouses, your investment advisors, and uh, anybody who provides services to your plan. And also any business entity in which any of the disqualified person has 50% or more interest. So those are basically immediate family members and to, to uh, help you remember that, think of it uh, as a vertical line. Uh, your, your parents and grandparents and your kids and grandkids and their spouses, they're, they're kind of all in a vertical line. Uh, now horizontal is okay, you can actually have your IRA or 401k conduct a business with your brother or cousin or nephew or uncle, but it's vertical, uh, immediate uh, family members are uh, considered disqualified. Now the uh, prohibited transaction rules, um, they prohibit any transactions that are direct or indirect. Uh, and that uh, is a sale, exchange, or leasing of any property between your retirement plan and a disqualified person. That is why when, you, uh, when your IRA or 401k buys investment property, you cannot stay in it yourself, you cannot live in that property, you cannot rent it to your parents or to your children. Uh, it is, uh, um, prohibits lending of money or other extension of credit between a plan and a disqualified person. So that, that is why uh, if you're um, buying a property inside of your uh, 
uh, retirement account, you have to use non-recourse financing because you cannot provide personal uh, guarantee for the loan and uh, you cannot uh, lend to your retirement account. Uh, you're not allowed to provide uh, goods or services or facilities between the plan and a disqualified person. An example of that will be uh, if you're a real estate agent and you're looking to buy a property for your 401k, you need to find another real estate agent to handle that transaction. You cannot be the agent uh, in that transaction. Uh, transfer to or use by or for benefit of a disqualified person of the income or assets of the plan. So uh, all of the assets or all of the plan uh, uh, income is to be used for the plan benefits only. You cannot use it for your own benefits. And uh, any act by a disqualified person who is a fiduciary where he deals with the income or assets of a plan for his own interest. So, um, you, you're not allowed to receive any personal benefits from investments of the plan. That's why you're not allowed to uh, live on the property or if you decide to purchase a vacation property inside of your retirement account, you will have to uh, rent that out to somebody else and you cannot use that personally. And finally, receive uh, any consideration for your own personal account by any disqualified person. So basically, you, not only you cannot uh, provide the services, but you also cannot get compensated for that. That is not allowed. Uh, buying a real estate inside of a retirement account is uh, pretty straightforward. You can certainly do that. Just keep in mind that all of the income and gains uh, generated in the account is going to be sheltered from taxes, unlike if you do it in your own name. Uh, so you can pay taxes at a future date uh, rather than paying taxes now and that allows you to basically uh, uh, grow your account much faster. Uh, so the, the gains are uh, that are generated inside of a Roth IRA or 401k are tax-free and uh, all of the income must go back into the account and all of the expenses must be paid from the account. So there is no commingling that is allowed uh, between your personal funds. Uh, you can also use leverage when buying real estate inside of your IRA or 401k. You cannot provide a personal guarantee, so the loan has to be non-recourse. You have to use uh, property is the only security for the loan. Typically, you need 30 to 50 percent down payment. Uh, property must provide sufficient cash flow to pay mortgage expense and you also must uh, have enough reserves. Uh, it will trigger unrelated debt finance income tax if you're using IRA and uh, there is only a handful of banks that do that uh, and we work with uh, uh, most of them. Uh, just a quick comparison between the, the, uh, all of the options. Uh, all of the options allow um, non-traditional investments. Uh, the first two, the self-directed IRA and checkbook IRA, uh, do require a custodian. Solo 401k does not require a custodian. Uh, you can have a checkbook control with the IRA LLC and with the Solo 401k. Um, the IRA LLC and Solo 401k will eliminate transaction fees, but you will have LLC fees with the IRA LLC. Um, the personal loan from your uh, account is only available with the solo 401k and that is also exempt from the UBIT tax on leveraged real estate. The contributions uh, for a solo 401k far exceed contributions for an IRA and uh, solo 401k also has a built-in RAT component. So looking at the summary uh, you probably see that clearly that solo 401k is superior to other accounts if you qualify for it and that's the key. So if you qualify, uh, that, that is probably one of your best options. Uh, but uh, um, I know I had a limited time uh, today so I've kind of uh, run through everything but uh, I do offer everyone who is on the call a free consultation. So you can uh, actually contact me, you can uh, uh, you can see the URL on your screen at sensefinancial.com uh, forward slash free hyphen consultation and uh, when you go there you can access my calendar directly. You're going to have some uh, uh, options to pick uh, what's available for you and that 
gets booked directly on my calendar. Uh, consultation is 15 minutes and uh, during this time we're going to discuss, we're going to look uh, at some details of what you have, the types of retirement accounts that you have, what your goals are, and then we will help you make the best decisions. Uh, so again, feel free to contact our office at 949-228-9394 uh, or visit our website or send me an email and uh, we will be happy to uh, help you and uh, make the best decision uh, in regards to your retirement account.